Hey guys, Christian Brindle here. Just wanted to quickly give you a quick announcement. Make sure to watch this lead review video all the way to the end as I'm going to have a special one-on-one -on -one clip with Glenn Shelton on some tips that you guys can better use to more effectively get more out of your leads. Hope you enjoy the video. Okay guys, here we are. Lead review video for lead heroes and this one was one that's been a long time coming one that we should have done probably sooner i admit um lead heroes is owned and operated by my friend glenn shelton um glenn put out a book about how to qualify present and sell final expense medicare supplements to seniors one thing that i really really like about glenn in the short time i've gotten to know him is he really does put out a lot of information and content to not only provide people with leads but to help people sell them more efficiently and effectively as well and there's not too many lead companies that do that you know um and since i I gave um, Secure Agent Leads a more positive score because of all the things that Cody Askins does for that. I got to implement that as well into this for, for Lead Heroes. I think Glenn does a really good job with that. You know, he has, he has a course, has a very um, prominent Facebook group that puts out free information. And um, I, I just really, really think that's important. Um, so basically, guys, let's jump right into Lead Heroes here. Now, Lead Heroes does a lot of different types of leads. Now, the specific type of leads that we did was we did telemarketed Medicare supplement leads right here. Um, we're basically someone in a call center calls people, gets people that are interested, and then they basically pass it off to me. Now, what I like about this model is essentially they are you know, usually going through the weeds and typically, a lot of times, you're only going to get interested people. So I like that model. Usually, it's pretty expensive to get leads like that um, that are quality. I found these to be pretty pretty good cost, pretty affordable. Um, so let's jump right in to the About Us for Lead Heroes. Okay, so Lead Heroes began in early 2015. Um, looks like they've gone through a couple of different things through hiring remote telemarketers, et cetera, et cetera. So Lead Heroes expanded its offerings in 2018 with an addition of direct mail leads, which is kind of cool. Um, like I said, though, we're only going to be reviewing the type of leads that we actually purchased, which were the telemarketed Medicare supplement leads. So let's jump right into those. And we'll get some more information about exactly what they do, how much they cost, et cetera, et cetera. So... Basically, the leads that we got, like I mentioned, are were, were called by someone ahead of time. They called them. They, um, they basically, you know, um, asked them a couple of qualifying questions, including a couple of inf questions about information about their health, which is good. Um, I think it kind of, you know, made it to where we had a much better chance of talking to a qualified buyer and a qualified prospect than anything else. Um, so... Let's see if we can get some information here about the costs and that kind of stuff. One thing I liked about it is, you know, I placed an order within about a week. I had my leads coming in um, and we got them really, really quickly. So I, I really, really value if you guys saw my Benepath lead video, you know that I tremendously will hammer a lead company if they can't give me volume. Um, I had no problem with the volume with these guys. Um, Okay, let me see, let me see, let me see. Okay, let's see. I want to buy Medigap, Medicare leads. I want to find the prices so I can show you guys exactly the prices here. And then we'll kind of get into my scores. There we go. There we are. Okay, so we got the premium leads. Okay. Premium leads were $29 per lead for Medicare supplements. Um, we ended up getting... Um, I'll go back and show the numbers as to exactly how many we got, but they were $29 per lead. Um, so I think that's a pretty, pretty good price if you think about it for a telemarketed lead. I mean, that that's that's a pretty good price, but we'll get into that more later on in the video. So at the end of each day, you guys, Lead Heroes will send you a Excel spreadsheet basically showing you everything about your leads one thing that I found that was very interesting is they actually include a recording of the, the, the phone call that the call center representative made to get in touch with that person so you can kind of get an idea 
of what was said, if they were really interested, if they really agreed to the phone call or anything like that. I thought that was really cool. I'm obviously cutting off all of the information, like phone numbers, addresses, all that stuff. Um, but like with this person, you can see that, you know, they mentioned they have Mutual of Omaha. They don't ask them all the health questions involved. They're pretty much going to ask them about some, you know, one or two things. But it can kind of give you an idea. I will play one of them for you so you can kind of hear what it sounds like. I would like to speak with Don Bonnie. This is her. Hi, Bonnie. This is uh, Chris. I'm calling with Medicare Supplement Solutions. And the reason why I'm calling because of the recent rate increases to the Medicare Supplement plans, you do have a Medicare Supplement, correct? I Madam? So? so basically, obviously, it's pretty obvious that the telemarketers are not in America, but what, what I was really impressed about is normally when you get telemarketers that aren't in America, you get two kinds. You get some that are just absolutely horrific, and you get some that do a pretty good job. I think these guys do a pretty good job because what one thing you can notice is they come right in and they're asking the qualifying questions. They're not really wasting time with like, how are you today? You know, They don't do any of that. They just kind of come right in, try to get the information right up front, and they're very good at getting that information. This is your secondary insurance that's paying out of your pocket. That 20% cost that Medicare doesn't cover. Do you have that, Meadow? I have other insurance, yep. Uh, like uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield, Muscle of Omaha, United Healthcare. Do you have that? Omaha. Mutual of Omaha is your secondary insurance, right? Yes. All right, madam. Oh, thank you very much uh, because, uh, madam, we just only want to make sure that you are not affected of this rate increases and not overpaying. That's why the Medicare Supplement Specialist will contact you any time today, all right? The Medicare Supplement Specialist is me. So basically, you guys kind of get the idea there. Um, I thought that was cool. You know, there's not too many. I've never seen another lead company that's willing to give you the phone calls like that for these types of leads. Um, I actually like that very much. So this is the criteria on which we're going to be judging these lead companies on. One, being the quality of leads. Two, being the customer service that's provided by the lead company. Number three, the convenience to the agent. How easy is it for the agent overall? And number four, how fair is the price? Now, I'm not going to be taking into consideration comparing it to the price of generating your own leads through your own marketing or own Facebook advertising or any type of social media advertising. This is just strictly in comparison to other lead companies and kind of how it matches up kind of in general. Each category, will be rated between one being the worst and 10 being the best, and then they'll be averaged together to give the lead company a score of one to 10. Each category will make up 25% of the overall score. So guys, quality of lead, what are we dealing with when it comes to Lead Hero? So what do we know so far? Well, we know that the leads are basically called um, from you know, ahead of time and pre-qualified by a call center representative. I think that they're very well trained. I think they do a very good job. I think it's very clear to me that they're not in the United States. Um, we got a total of, I think it was a little over 20 leads. They threw some bonus leads on on top of it, which we'll talk about more in the service and convenience sections of the video. Here's my thing. I think that when it comes to quality of lead, I think that I'm going to give Lead Heroes an 8 out of 10. And I really struggled with this because I wanted to give it higher because I felt like the call center representatives do a really good job. I wanted to give them a 9 out of 10 here. Um, the reason why I didn't is because I feel like anytime you have an out of country call center representative calling the leads ahead of time, I don't think you're always going to get. The highest interest of people. Now, this lead order was very, very profitable for us. So, out of those 20 leads, 
I only went through and called them twice so far. Um, and out of that, that going through and calling it twice, we were able to sell three med subs last week and we have five phone appointments scheduled for this week. So that number could balloon right up quite a bit, but that was only going through and calling twice. I didn't go through and call them five times, six times, seven times, eight times. I think we could probably could have gotten a lot more at that rate. Um, but in the first week selling three apps, um, all over the phone, I'll have you, of course, pandemic, um, I think that, you know, there were a lot of people that we got on the phone that, you know, they, they had no interest of talking to me, you know, and I, and you're going to get that with every kind of lead batch, every kind of lead order. But I did feel like I felt like they did a really, really, really good job for what they do. But I think when it comes to calling and pre-qualifying a lead and that kind of stuff, I feel like um, no one's going to do a better job than you, especially not an over out of country call center representative. I really struggled with this one. I really wrestled with this one. Was so close to giving them nine out of ten here, but just because of that, I just I I, I have I, I have to give them an eight out of ten for quality. In terms of customer service, you guys, I was very, very impressed and blown away with the customer service. So when I first placed the order, it was within a week that we had the leads coming in on the ball, right on the ball. Um, these are, of course, Medicare supplement leads, so that's very impressive. There's obviously a high demand for Medicare supplement leads. So essentially, um, the other thing that was really impressive to me is, you know, or early on, I had some trouble being able to kind of integrate them with my CRM just because, you know, I was having a little miscommunication with them and whatever the case might be. They got right involved. Glenn got right involved, helped get that resolved for me um, to kind of take that headache off my shoulders. Very, very good. Very impressive. And um, for the leads that we did order, we had it set up to where they were going to come in. I think it was either three or five a day. I don't remember. But there was the second day that we had probably almost 10 come in, which is a lot more than I was expecting. Um, and later on that day, I got a call from one of the representatives at Lead Heroes, basically apologizing to me for sending over too many leads, which is never, it's always a good problem to have. Too many leads is always a good problem to have. They offered to, you know, try to do something to kind of make up for the inconvenience. And I was perfectly fine with it. I was perfectly happy to get more leads. Um, the service is fantastic. I think they do a really, really good job. You're not going to have too many lead companies reach out to you um, about how something's going, to apologize if they send you too many leads or not enough or whatever the case might be. Um, customer service was great. I had a really good experience. So for that, I'm giving them 10 out of 10. Convenience to the agent, guys. How convenient are Lead Hero leads? I would give them um, an ultimate score on as far as convenience goes. There's something to be said about telemarketed leads, Medicare supplement leads, that you can make an order and they're going to come in within a week. I mean, that's awesome. You guys, very convenient. They made it very, very easy for me. Like I mentioned already in the video, they got everything worked out with my CRM. I didn't really have to do anything. Um, you know, because I wasn't really getting the answers I wanted from my CRM. They were kind of being difficult. They got that all figured out for me. Um, they emailed the leads to me. They sent me a spreadsheet at the end of the day every day. To, and then I could also hear the conversation so I could hear the scripts they were using. That kind of helped me more with my 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 phone calls to these leads because I knew what they were being told. Um, and like I mentioned, you know, already, you know, everything that they have done to kind of help us out in my opinion, makes them a very convenient lead company. I like lead companies where I don't have to jump through a lot of hoops. I don't have to deal with a lot of bullshit. I like lead companies to where, you know, I can make an order, I can pay them some money, and I'm going to get some leads, and I'm not going to have any problems. The reason why we gave Benepath leads such a crappy score is because they haven't figured that out. Lead Heroes has. 10 out of 10 for convenience. Like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, we got the premium Medicare supplement leads at $29 a pop. $29 a pop for telemarketed leads and to the level that, that, that these telemarketed leads are, I think is very good. 
Um, I think it's, you know, a, a good price for the quality of leads. I, like I mentioned, I think the quality was good. Um, and I think the price was very reasonable. You know, there's a lot of times then with a lot of lead companies, you can pay $30, $40, $50 a lead for exclusive leads. For them, we were able to get it for $29 exclusive leads, of course. It's Medicare supplement leads, so those are very valuable. They're not just like generic Medicare leads. They're specifically Medicare supplement leads. Um, and most of the people we called did have Medicare supplements. There were some people that had group plans or retiree plans and things like that that also factored in a little bit to the quality. But there were probably 70% of the leads did actually indeed have Medicare supplements. I think for $29 a lead, that's a really good price. Um, and what can I say with other than that? I think I would give them a 10 out of 10 on the price standpoint as well. My final thoughts is this, guys. Their final, our final score for Lead Heroes is 9.5 out of 10. Really like the the leads. Really like the company. I really like Glenn. Um, I've had some people say, you know, that well, Christian, you're an experienced agent. You're going to be able to do well with any leads. And you're going to give them all a good score. Go check out my Benepath lead video if you really think that. Um, didn't give them a good score. Um, I do. It's true. Every single lead video that we've done, I've been done very well with them. Um, and I think that kind of comes down to, you know, you can give me any type of lead and I think I'm going to do very well with them because I'm experienced, I know what I'm doing, but I'm looking at more than just the results I walked away with. I'm kind of trying to look at every per angle and every perspective from a new agent to experienced agent. How easy is this company to work with? How much of the leads cost? Um, I'm not only looking at my results because I understand that my results are not going to be the same results that everybody has. Um, so, but there's a lot of things I like about this company. Um, I think they're really, really good, top notch, and they're a good organization to do business with. Um, and as promised, here's my conversation with Glenn Shelton, founder and owner of Lead Heroes, on how you can get more out of your leads. Thanks for watching all the way to this point. I really appreciate you doing this, and you know, this will be at the end of our um, lead review video for Lead Heroes, just kind of as a special bonus. So. Anybody that's watching this, uh, make sure that you check that out. Um, it's going to be one of our best ones yet. I, I we'll, promise. We'll link it once you once you have it published. We'll we'll link that review video underneath this live for sure. Awesome, perfect, perfect. Well, Glenn, I I thought that it you know I could have kind of an interesting conversation with you because you're someone that's been an agent, that's someone that's been in the field that's sold quite a bit. Um, and I thought that you might be able, I'm, I'm sure that you come across a lot of agents from different ends of the spectrum, right? You probably come across agents that are, that are newer to the business. You probably have experienced agents. Is there one particular thing that you notice with a new agent that will come and buy your leads and they just completely struggle and you just take a look at their approach and be like, mm, if you could just fix that one thing, you'd, you'd get a lot more return. Ooh, that's a good question. You like my, my branding plug here? I'm just like, there's nothing, nothing. Yeah. And I'm just pretending. No, it's actually coffee. I'm still drinking coffee at, at two o'clock in the afternoon here. See, that's how we know you have a problem. That's right. Caffeine addict. Um, <laughs> no, that's a fantastic question, Christian. And, and yeah, you're absolutely right. I talk to agents from all ends of the spectrum, from people who are brand new to the industry, who just got their license to, you know, hi, uh, I'm a a marketing representative at this IMO and I want to set you up with my most successful agency to see if we can plug you guys in. So we do see everything. Um, what I can tell you, like a very recent experience that's very relevant to this question is, you know, when I'm speaking to you and I'm trying to help you, because again, I want to help you lead heroes wants to help you close more business because if you're closing more business, naturally you're going to want to come back and buy more leads, spend more money with us. So, you know, when you're, when we're having a conversation and let's say you had the leads for a week, there's going to be some questions that I'm going to ask, like, well, how many leads did you actually speak to? You know, how many leads are, do you still need to follow up with? How many leads, you know, were you able to submit any applications at all? So, you know, having a method to tracking the leads. And again, this is, this is so much beyond lead heroes. There's so many ways to track leads too. There's an, almost an unlimited amount of software these days, CRM software, dialer software. 
So, you know, this agent that I'm speaking about most recently, and we're having this conversation and, and his opinion was very different from yours. His opinion was that our leads were terrible, right? And that it was some of the worst leads that he had ever worked. And I said, okay, that's fine. But I, you know, I, for me to like understand what's going on, I just, I need to know some of these basic stats. Well, you know, how many calls did you make? How many people did you speak to? You know, how many do you need to follow up with apps, all this. And he had no stats that he could share with me. He was printing leads out and then just writing it down on paper that that's all he was doing. That was his tracking. And I'm like, you know, it's, I, I can't help you. You know, I can't help you. And, and furthermore, anyone who's trying to train you or mentor you, how, how can anyone really help you? You know, if you're not doing any type of lead tracking, one of the first things I told this person is I said, you know, I'm like, there's a million ways to record a phone call. And that's a really easy way of me figuring out what's going on. Send me a recorded phone call of you calling the leads back. Let me, let me hear it. I don't need your anecdotal stories about, oh, well, I called this lead and he yelled at me. Like, that's, that's really not necessary. Like, I show me the data. You know, we've, I was thinking about it before we hopped on this call. We've generated more than a half a million leads over the years. Wow. Um, and we'll probably do over 100,000 leads just in this year. Potentially wow. more, I don't know. But, you know, so we, we have this large data set at this point where I understand the law of large numbers. I know what the averages are. I know that you're not necessarily going to see the average in your first batch, especially if it's a smaller batch. But I want to help as many agents as possible get to the point where they are profitable, where they can, you know, close more business and hopefully come back and buy more leads. So the one thing to make this extremely long-winded answer, you know, what can a new agent do to try to be more successful that a lot of times they don't? It's lead tracking. Um, get your contact rate as high as you possibly can. The goal is 80%. That's what I tell everyone. You should be trying to speak to 80% or more of every single lead. And that means you talk to them, you have a conversation. Maybe they said no early on. Maybe they said follow up later, but getting to that 80% contact rate, it trickles down. And that's when you're going to start seeing the follow ups more. You're going to start seeing more applications, more issued apps, more commissions. Well, yeah, I, I like that a lot. I think that like if, if you're not tracking your numbers, you know, you're going to forget that you called that lead or you're going to, you're going to think you called them when you didn't. And it's just, or organizations key. I, a couple months ago, I did an interview with Cody Askins and he, he had kind of a similar story. He told me, um, he said that, you know, there was an agent that made an order from them and complained and basically were like, these leads are no good. These leads are garbage. And, you know, Cody was like, he's like, I don't really give refunds, but I gave this guy a refund. He's like, but I, I, I did it on, on the, on, on the um, agreement that he would be willing to have me call his leads live on a live Facebook video and to see if they're really that bad. And the guy's like, yeah, go ahead. Those leads are garbage. So Cody, Cody does it and he goes through, he's calling them and he just like knocks it out of the park with them in like the first 10 to 15 minutes. He got like a bunch of great responses and everything. And, and I think, I think one thing he said that really jumped out at me and I think it kind of goes along with what you said is I don't know if it's so much the lead that it is. I think it's more so the agent than the lead. Yeah. And I think, you know, if agents um, are more organized, like you said, and they're, and they, and they do a better job of following up. I think a lot of agents don't follow up like they should. I think like agents will sometimes call a lead one time and make a decision that it's no good if they don't answer the phone or something like that, or whatever the case might be um, is so have, have you seen, you've obviously, you know, been in situations, I'm sure, where you've had agents that, you know, will make an order like that and they'll, and they'll come back and they'll complain. What, what is your approach with something like that? Do you try to coach them into maybe having better results or, or what do you, how do you usually handle that? Because I'm sure all lead vendors get that. Oh, absolutely. I mean, and, and the thing is, and, and to kind of, you know, to quote Cody, since you already brought him up, you know, we all know at this point, it's obvious that 90% of insurance agents fail in their first year. Mm -hmm. um, and I just brought this up to someone last week when, you know, they're talking about reorder rates, you know, and, and again, obviously we don't get every agent to reorder because most agents are in and out very quickly. Um, but, you know, how, yeah, when someone approaches us or they call me and they say, you know, hey, Glenn, the leads really didn't work well. This is what I experienced. 
you know, first and foremost, I, I kind of take apart the order because again, um, I don't necessarily speak to everyone before they place their lead order, but I tried to, and, and that's for multiple reasons, setting the expectations, talking about the area. I mean, we'll, we'll target market anywhere that just about anyone wants, right? So, I mean, if you were like, hey, Glenn, I really want to get more apps out of Maine, I'm going to call Maine, you know, especially if you just go through a website and submit the order, you know, we'll, we'll do it. We'll send you leads from Maine. But then, you know, there's, there's things where it's like, well, you know, this isn't a very great area to be targeting. You know, there's, there's certain states for, you know, Southern California, Florida, New Jersey, you know, those three areas are, especially if you're selling over the phone and you're licensed in a bunch of states, like that is not optimal areas to target. If you're local to there, especially if you were selling face to face before the pandemic or in the future. Yeah, sure. That makes sense. You know, let's target your local area. Um, but so, you know, the first thing I'll do is I'll kind of take apart the order and see if there's anything like that where maybe the area we targeted was wrong. Maybe we pulled the wrong data set, which happens every now and then with, with an order that we're targeting. Um, you know, we'll go through, we have a whole Q and a team at lead heroes. So we try to listen to every call before it goes out. So, you know, I'll also submit to my Q and A team and say, Hey, like we need to listen to this order. This person's complaining and I want to know, you know, was this us or, you know, is this something that we're something else? So after we've kind of gone through the back end of the order and then when I'm able to talk to the agent, you know, that's the, the first thing I'm going through with them is, you know, Hey, well, let's, you know, what was your approach? You know, the first two sentences you say on that phone call can, can be the difference between them hanging up or, you know, them willing to talk to you. And that's a, that's an, another really big thing um, is agents sometimes refuse to tweak their intro. And yeah, of course, if, yeah. you know, if you just say, you know, Hey, I'm here to write your Medicare supplement, you know, like what? No, I already have one, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> stupid stuff like that. And, and on the, the life insurance side, I think it's more blatant where, where guys are like, Hey, uh, I just want to quote you some life insurance. You know, hey, I'm here. I'm here to tell you how much that life insurance is going to cost. Like just stupid interest. It's like that. There's there's a you know an an elegance. There's a a grace to what yes. you say and and kind of your word flow. So, you know, talking about the intro. What are they saying to the leads? And then it's you know, well, how many leads did you actually get a hold of? Well, Glenn, I've only talked to forty percent of the leads so far. Well, that means there's sixty percent that easily could roll over. And you need to spend some more time dialing. And yeah, maybe you didn't get them on the phone the first time. You mentioned most agents don't follow up. Absolutely. The vast majority of agents will only make maybe one phone call. Some won't call their leads at all. Some, some make one contact attempt. And then maybe a few more make two. But if you're willing to make three or more contact attempts, now you've completely separated yourself from the crowd and you're significantly more likely to make a sale. So that's, that's yeah. kind of that's kind of like the process, you know, it's, it's different for everybody and what lead it is and where they ordered and how many leads and what they're hearing. So, you know, that, but yeah, well, I just kind of try to break it down and see if there's somewhere where maybe something went wrong. And if not, you know, is there something I can do to try to coach an agent to help them get better? Is, would you say, um, cause you offer a lot of different kind of leads. Um, you offer, I, I, I saw on the site that you offer direct mail leads. You obviously do the telemarketed leads. Is, is there a type of lead that you think is going to be easier for a new agent to market right off the bat? Um, and is there a type of lead that you think a more experienced agent might be able to get more out of? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. And unfortunately, we stopped up. We did have a direct mail program last year that we were pushing and it might be, there might be some spots where it talks about on our website that we need to get rid of. But okay. um, everything we do right now is exclusively through the call center. Gotcha. So everything gets call verified. Um, but as far as like a new, I think if you're a brand new agent with what we offer, it, the standard leads, I personally think are, are the best bang for the buck. Where, you know, with, with direct mail and with internet leads, you don't know if that's a real phone number attached to it. You don't know if they actually want to speak to someone. But with our leads, if we talk to them, we're verifying their information. So, you know, we got them at their phone. So when you call them back, it's going to save you that much more time. If you get a lead that says, you know, Hey, it's Mickey mouse at one, two, three street. 
that's just a total waste of time for everybody, for us, mm -hmm. for you, for the prospect. They're, you know, the prospect doesn't get the information they want. The agent doesn't make a sale. And then the lead company has to replace that lead. So we're trying to eliminate all of that nonsense mm -hmm. by having a call verification done. So, you know, the standard leads are about 15 bucks when you order 100 or more. And, and that saves you that time from cold calling like we were talking about earlier. If you're, if you're doing a bunch of cold calling, you're going to spend all week to generate a handful of leads versus, you know, spending money with us. We'll do all the cold calling for you. And then you just focus on the people who have shown some type of interest. Um, and if you're a more experienced agent, we do have kind of a higher filtered lead like what you worked. You know, you worked our premium Medicare supplement lead where we had the health filters, where we, we made sure we got either the carrier or the premium, sometimes both. Um, and then we submit that to you in real time. Well, awesome. Awesome. I mean, you know, and one, one thing, one thing that, you know, I had some people uh, message me in the last week since we let put the lead concept video out is they said, well, Christian, you're going to, you're experienced. You're going to do well with any lead company, you know, and you're going to give them all a good score because you're going to do good with all of them. I'm like, not true. You know, go watch our yeah. Benepath video, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Right. Like we did well with those leads, but I, I, I bashed them over the head because they're, they weren't easy to work with. Um, talk about how important it is for, for you guys. In, in my opinion, um, I think you guys are very easy to work with for us as an agent. That's kind of been my um, first impression working with you guys. How important is that for an agent to work with a lead company that is easy to deal with? Yeah, it's really important. It really is important. And, and, you know, one thing that we really stress at Lead Heroes is if you do try to reach out to us, whether you, you're calling us or you're sending us an email, we really stress a 24 hour turnaround time or less on any communication we get. Um, and, you know, part of that is because we want your business. But the other part of it is, like you said, I mean, it's, it's taking care of, of your clients of your, your lead clients. And it's funny you mentioned this because I actually took some time probably about a year, maybe two years ago. And I just started calling all these different lead companies. I just kind of wanted to hear what they had to say. And I maybe got one person on the phone when I called like 10 different companies and, and I left messages for almost every other company and, and almost nobody called me back. And it's why, you know, I, I just said, Hey, I'm glad I'm, I'm looking for leads. You know, I didn't really say much of anything, but almost no response at all. Wow. So yeah, it doesn't surprise me at all. When I hear from agents and they're like, Oh, well, uh, you know, so-and-so didn't get back to me for three weeks. They never sent me any leads. I never heard back. I had to call my credit card company and, and, you know, they're super angry yeah, it makes a bad name for, you know, people like us who are, you know, and we're not the only honest lead vendor out there. There's others, obviously. But yeah, I mean, it's crucial that you can communicate with the with your, your marketing company or else how are you going to how are you going to move forward? You know? Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. I mean, and I think we've all worked with lead companies like that. You know, I mean, there's been lead companies, I'm not going to say the name, but, um, you know, we'd be right in the middle of AEP and we can't get a hold of anybody. Oh. And we put five, six, seven grand with that company pre AEP, you know, and we're highly um, counting on them. <laughs> and I think that's really, really important. I mean, one thing that I thought was really cool with, with you guys is, you know, um, there, there was that one day where there where they had a bunch of leads come through, which to me, I don't look at, ever look at that as a problem, but maybe another agent might, I don't know. But, yes. Um, How about, yes, there are <laughs> agents. Here. Stop to, sending me leads. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> See, like, you know, Christian looks at that as like, thank you. Yeah. You know? That's a good problem to have. I'm, right? I'm just, yeah, I, I'll, I'll take that problem any day of the right. week. But, but when one thing I thought that was so cool was, you know, we had somebody, you know, you got, you, you had somebody from the company reach out, make sure we were okay. I mean, that's, that's really good service in my opinion. You know, I think, um, I don't think I've ever had another lead company kind of react that way. Um, and you know, it, it wasn't a big deal, but it was still a nice gesture, you know? Um, one, one, one last question I had for you, Glenn, and then we can wrap this up. Um, I find that agents have the hardest time knowing what to say right when they get on the phone. Is there a certain kind of dialogue you think is helpful for agents? Cause I've always said, I think agents 
when you first get on the phone with a lead, you have a limited amount of time, maybe 10 seconds to kind of gauge their interest, kind of let them know why you're talking for them to stay on the phone with you. Is there a certain kind of dialogue that you see agents use that work really well? That, um, and is there a certain type of dialogue you see agents use that just kills them? And that might have a lot to do with why they have a bad order. Yeah. So like specifically in regards to like the, the, that intro script when you first call that lead back, right? Yeah. So, I mean, I think the key is in specific to Medicare, since that's really the focus of, of our conversation. So with Medicare, um, the focus is, is really should be about saving the money. Um, I think that's the hook, right? So there's, mm-hmm. there's really two things when you're working our leads that I recommend. Um, one is focus on the savings. Two is to use the information that we got on that phone call. So if, if we got their carrier, then it's Mutual of Omaha, or if we got the premium amount, it's 200 bucks a month, you know, bringing that back up and, and just, you know, act like you're confirming the information you already have, be confident, right? You know, hi, Mrs. Jones, this is Glenn. I'm giving you a call back in regards to your Medicare supplement plan. You said that you have Mutual of Omaha. It looks like you're paying more than $200 a month. Wow, that seems like a lot. Is that right? And just kind of give them a second to confirm the information you already have. And again, you're, you're building rapport, you're building trust at that point. And then once they confirm that, you know, the, the really the segue from there that I recommend is, hey, you know, if, if you give me a second here, I can run your information. I'm a licensed agent with your state. You can look me up. Um, but I can tell you, it, our, we can see if you're overpaying and there's a chance that without changing any benefits, you know, your, your benefits are exactly the same. Um, we might be able to save you some money. I just saved so-and-so, you know, a thousand dollars a year and her coverage stayed exactly the same. And one of my favorite analogies that uh, I like to use is the gas station analogy, right? When you have two gas stations across the street from each other, Same exact gas, but it's all federally standardized about what that product is. But one gas station might be 10 cents less per gallon than the other. A plan F is a plan F, you know, yeah, plan G and N might work a little differently, but it's still all federally standardized. It doesn't matter the name of the insurance company. Uh, And, you know, I'm a broker. I work for you, Mrs. Jones. And then just really trying to get to that quote, because once you get to the quote and then you can, you have proof that you can save the money. Now you just really drive that point home. You know, Hey, Mrs. Jones, you know, I'm looking at it right here and it looks like if I put you with IAC or, you know, America, what, whatever, whatever other company you're, you're using and, and then just saying, yeah, it looks like $50 a month, $600 a year. Wow. What would you do with $600 a year? And if they don't buy today, you just keep hammering that same point home. Mm -hmm. Call next week. Hey, Mrs. Jones, this is Glenn. We talked last week. I was explaining that I could save you 600 bucks a year. Is this a better time? Are are you ready to move forward? We can see if we can get you approved. Not everybody gets approved, you know, maybe take it away. But yeah, that's, that's specifically with the, the Medicare leads. That's kind of my recommended approach. I like it. I think it's a really good approach. I mean, you know, especially with these leads where, you know, one thing that I found that I was very pleased about is a lot of times when you'll buy Medicare supplement leads that are Medicare supplement leads, right? you'll have, you know, 60% of them turn out to be MAPDs. Right. And one thing I found with your leads is they were Medicare supplement leads. They were people that actually had Medicare supplements. I was like, pretty, there, I, I mean, surprised. Don't, uh, don't oversell us here. So how many, did you have some, <laughs> did you have, you had to have sure. some MAs in there, right? At least a few. So out of the people I talked to, I don't think I talked to one MA, but there were wow. some people that had, you know, retirement plans or something like that, that weren't right. Medicare supplements. But I mean, I'd say probably 70% of them, the ones that we, that I actually spoke to, they had some kind of Medicare supplement. I was amazed. I was like, wow. That's you a, know, because you don't see that yeah. everywhere. Oh, that's a, it's a big advantage. And again, that's the power of being able to filter on the phone versus mail or internet where, where you don't have that same filter ability. But what ultimately we found works best for that filter is just targeting the areas that have a low MA percentage. We actually just updated a map on our website. 
uh, with 2020 data, we were using some a couple years older data. So now we we're, we have the the most recent data published on our website that shows you you know where the high MA counties and the low Medicare Advantage counties are. While med subs aren't tracked federally like Medicare Advantages, you just kind of have to do the inverse if you are trying to get more med sub clients. Just look in the areas where Medicare Advantage isn't popular. That means there's a lot more MedSup. It's typically the more rural areas. You target those areas with really any marketing and you're going to have a better chance. Now, of course, being on the phone and, and saying, you know, hey, this is about MedSup. This is about MedSup. This is about MedSup. We typically say Medicare supplement at least three times on our script. Um, that helps too. You know, that helps eliminate it. And then, of course, if they say, oh, I'm not paying anything or, oh, I pay $50 a month. You know, those are people you're never going to speak to because we're filtering them for you. Definitely. Definitely. Well, I appreciate the time and I appreciate you coming on and sharing some wisdom um, for everybody. And um, I hope everybody got a lot out of the video. I mean, we gave, we gave you guys a good score. Um, we did nine and a half out of 10, oh, 9.5 out of 10. I've never Chris. given anyone a 10. I've never what do given I have to do, Christian? <laughs> My employees are calling. Do I need to send you chocolate? Like, what is this? <laughs> Co Cody did the same thing. Cody gave me a hard time. He's like, he's like 9.5. He's like, not 10, bro. I'm like, <laughs> my 10 would have to be like from Jesus, <laughs> you know? Like, I'd have to have like 100% close ratio. And like, <laughs> like, but, but yeah, I mean, you know, I really appreciate you doing this. And, um, yeah. and I'm, I'm sure we're going to do more business together as time goes on. I'm looking forward to it. And I appreciate your honesty and I appreciate you taking the time to, to do a review. I mean, like I said earlier, it's, it's unfortunate that there are so many bad lead companies, scam lead companies, um, overnight lead companies, people that just pop up, they're here for a month and then they're gone. Um, and unfortunately it sets a really bad name for the rest of us. So yeah, you know, taking some time, you know, hopefully we can get this out to more agents and help as many agents out as possible. Yep. Yep. That's the goal. We got to go through and we've done a lot of good lead companies lately. We've got to go find some of the backwater ones and do some review videos on them. Cause I think those are the ones people want to see. I think everybody knows that the good ones are good, but we get the good ones done first. Yeah. Well, the other problem too, with some of these companies, some of the ones that are really legit, um, they're only, they, they really prioritize the bigger fish. So independent agents and small agencies will, will really hit the back burner. And that might be some of, I didn't actually watch your pet path video yet, but I have a feeling that could be part of it. Um, those big lead yeah. companies, they just, it's like they spend all their energy and time and focus on, on the really big call centers and the big, IMOs, FMOs, and they just seems like they just don't even care about anybody else. Yeah. I think the reason why I hammered them so hard, um, and I'll share this a little bit on the video. This is a plug for that video. If you haven't seen that video, go watch that video. But, <laughs> um, but that video, but the reason why I hammered them so hard was they had, um, so many hoops that someone needs to jump through to order and then to stop ordering hmm. that I thought it was unbelievable. Um, like, for example, you know, they lock you in for four weeks and they're going to charge you once a week, every week for four weeks, no matter what you do. You have to commit to that. And I didn't like that. I'm not, I'm not a commit kind of guy. Um, and, and the other thing is you have to send an email to them two weeks in advance wow. to get them to stop automatically charging you after the fourth week. If you don't do that, they're going to keep charging you week after week after week after week after week until, you know, you're credit card gets declined or something. Um, and so I didn't like any of that, you know, and then um, we sent in the, the email to get them to stop and they didn't get the email or didn't process it or says it or something didn't, because yeah, I, I didn't get it. Yeah. So I, Cause I called them and they were like, we don't have anything on file for you to cancel. I'm like, Oh, so I, I mean, those kind of things were what I hammered them for just difficult. Yeah. Yeah. And that could be, it could be a number of things, but um, anything else from the telesales point of view um, that you could share with with agents who might be struggling to transition? Um, you know, we talked a little bit earlier about um, you know being organized beyond just scribbling on paper and, and having. And there's obviously many ways of doing that. Anything like that 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 you think you could share to to help agents out? 
Yeah, yeah, certainly. Um, I would say, you know, to agents that want to get involved in telesales, maybe you've been a fine, maybe you've been a face-to-face agent for, you know, five years, 10 years, your whole career, whatever. Um, my biggest advice is just, you know, I would say, and is, this might sound ridiculous and it might sound simple, but I would say if you just take your, your normal approach and instead of just doing it in person, you do it over the phone, you're probably going to be, have a lot better results than what you might think. Because I don't know about, you know, you, Glenn, but when I'm selling over the phone compared to when I sell in person, I pretty much do the same thing. The only difference is I'm sitting in front of somebody or I'm not sitting in front of somebody, but I don't do things that differently when I'm selling over the phone. I mean, to me, I think it's for a lot of agents, I think it's in their head that it's so different. And I don't think it's that different. I think there are a couple differences, you know, like I think tonality is much more important. You don't have to worry about body language as much little things like that. But I think that if you're trying to transition into telesales, um, I think the main thing that you need to be doing is just get basically get out of your own way and do it. I mean, a lot of agents are used to scheduling appointments, making a call to schedule an appointment. So if that's something that you absolutely can't get over, why not make a call to schedule an appointment over the phone? Yeah. You know, it might make you feel more comfortable. It might make it seem more like what you normally do. Um, some agents are hard or have a hard time just going right into the appointment right then and there on their first time talking to the prospect maybe schedule an appointment in two days from now to do a phone appointment. You know, um, it, it'd be more similar to what you're doing, what you're accustomed to doing, and it might make you feel more comfortable. But I think more than anything, as I think, I just think, you know, um, it's in the head, it's in their head for a lot of people. And I, I just don't think there's that much differences. I've never had much of a different approach. I've had um, like agency owners and just people have been in the industry a while. I've seen that advice floated many times. Like if someone comes in and they're brand new to the industry and they really want to learn telesales, I've seen that advice given where it's like, you know, why don't you go do face to face sales for like six months at least, you know, cut your teeth. And cause again, it, it really, the products are all the same. You know, how you sign for it is really the biggest difference from face to right. face to selling over the phone. You know, it's either an e-signature or a voice signature or, um, you know, obviously you could potentially drop an app in the mail if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. Uh, But yeah, ultimately the words you're saying are going to be exactly the same. So yeah, I actually think that that's some great advice is, you know, start, if you are a face-to-face agent and you're struggling with making this transition or maybe you have analysis paralysis and you think you need to have all these things, you know, the technology helps. It can help a lot, but you don't have to have the technology. You can literally just pick up your phone and start dialing. You know, you don't have to have a fancy dialer and yeah, just start with what you know. And, and honestly, and this would be kind of my advice for you guys. If you feel like you're stumbling, if, if you feel like that prospect might might lose interest because you're, you're kind of fumbling around. Just, I would just be honest with them. Hey, you know, typically I do this face to face, but right now because of the pandemic and because I really care about, you know, protecting seniors, I'm doing everything over the phone. Uh, so yeah, you know, I, I apologize if, if I messed up or if I need to go get uh, an answer for this, I don't have the answer in front of me right now for this. And I'm going to call you back once I figure the underwriting out and see if you're going to get approved or not, et cetera, whatever it is, you know? Yeah. And, and I think that's really smart. That works. That really does work, you know, cause I mean, that's, that's what kind of basically, in my opinion, I think you're bringing them into a place of familiarity and comfort because we're all dealing with this pandemic to, at the same time. We're all dealing with it together. It's something we can all sympathize with. Um, and they're going to have some kind of sympathy for you. That's, that's, that's exactly an approach that we used heavily um, the last month or so since we shut down our office, since we stopped doing face-to-face appointments um, was, you know, Hey, normally we'd like to do this in person or normally we'd, we'd come to the house. Normally we do this. I mean, we, I'm, we don't go to the house much anymore, but um, normally we do this, but with everything going on, we're just concerned about, you know, our client's safety. Um, we, we, we feel like it's best to kind of try to do this digitally and over the phone you know, electronically yeah. and over the phone. And, and, and I, I, I gotta be honest with you. I don't think I had one person um, push back on that because they don't want us coming to the house anyway <laughs> with everything going right. on. 
Yeah. I mean, I talked to an agent uh, in Texas today and he was amped about some of the, you know, restrictions getting, getting lowered. But in my head, I'm thinking regardless of what the state says right now or the government, yeah. et cetera, you know, I don't think anyone would, would, would harm you or, or feel bad about trying to do business over the phone right now. Um, and, and again, you know, seniors are at the highest risk and um, why, why not protect them and why not transition now? The, the, the other part of this too is the environment for telesales could not be better. You have people at home, you have a pickup rate on the, you know, from someone who operates a call center full time, I've watched the pickup rate continue to go up since the pandemic first started. Um, and again, the more people that answer the phones, that means the more sales you're going to make. Um, one of the biggest complaints I used to get before the pandemic was not getting enough people back on the phone. And so that's essentially one of the big problems that's completely been eliminated right now. People are picking up their phones. People are worried about their health. People are worried about their life. They're, they're happy to talk with an agent right now, you know? So yeah, I, I totally agree with that. Um, and Glenn, before, before we, we end this, because I know this is going to be going on our video as well, yeah. talk about where people can connect with you. How can they get in touch with Lead Heroes if they wanted to make an order? Absolutely. I want to hear, I want you to talk about uh, your university as well. I would love to, okay. I need to get in there too. I need to, I want to see your videos, man. I hear great things about, you. yeah, please I'll, do. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a login. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, in, in regards, if you're trying to get a hold of us at Lead Heroes, so one of the best things you can do is leads, just shooting us an email, leads, L-E-A-D-S, leads at leadheroes.com. I work out of that email address with multiple assistants. Um, so if you're looking for a very quick response, if you just have a question or if you're trying to confirm a lead order or you want to place a new order, um, that's one of the best ways to get a hold of us. You can also just give us a call at our 800 number. It is 8447HEROES, 8447HEROES, or just go to our website, leadheroes.com, and you can even schedule a call right there on our website on the Contact Us page. Perfect, perfect. And if you're watching the YouTube video, I'll put this that down in the description. Um, and as far as the university is concerned, yes. Um, yes. so Six Figure Medicare University is a training platform that we put out probably less than a month ago. Um, I originally created it for our agents, our contracted agents, that because, you know, we've been bringing on more agents than ever, our organization, um, and I found it very, very challenging to train them all at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Because, um, you know, all of them want to spend three hours on the phone with me, and I just can't do it with every single person. So we created it for our agents. It's 120 videos. We add videos, try to add videos to it every week. Um, and it's, it, it goes over everything from, you know, how I made my podcast, um, the ins and outs, what I look for in that, um, the, the Everything Medicare podcast, which is mainly door, geared towards consumers, which has been a very great lead generation tool for us. Um, it goes over YouTube videos, how we make our YouTube videos, how we create um, uh, thumbnails, images for marketing. Um, it goes over... Facebook ads, scripts, leads, companies, all it, there's a, there's, a, there's something I think for everybody. Um, and you're still, and, are you still at, you're adding content continuously, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's funny too, because you know, when, when I put it out, I think it had 115 videos, something like that. And I was thinking about putting it out, but I thought um, to myself, I'm like, I'm, I'm a perfectionist with that kind of stuff. Um, especially if people are going to be paying for it. And I'll get into that in a second because for our age, for our contracted agents, it's free, right. but there's a lot of people that aren't contracted with us. They don't want to be contracted with us because they right. like their upline, which is fine. So we put out a paid version of it. Um, it's typically four ninety five dollars for lifetime access one time. But if you're in the group, you get a hundred dollars off three ninety five. dollars um, But yeah, so I, I, you know, we, it had 115 videos at the time I launched it. I was talking to my wife about it and I was like, I just don't feel like it's good enough. And so she looked at it. She scrolled down looking through the video. She watched a couple of them. She's like, you're nuts. She's like, this is worth so much more than you're charging for it. She's like, and you don't think it's good enough? Why? She's like, where else are they going to get all this information for that price? And I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, I just, I just feel like maybe I could put in more. And she's like, she's like, it's really good. It's 
underpriced if you ask me. And she's like, if you, if, if you really feel that way, add new videos as they, as you, as you make them, but just put it out. It's got yeah. tons of content. And she was right. She was right. Cause we put it out and you know, we've had a lot of positive feedback, which I appreciate. Um, and I think we have about 25 agents on the platform right now. You know, I can't speak. I haven't, I haven't gotten in there yet. I've seen a lot of your content. I, so I, I, I can speak to your quality of your content that I have seen. Um, and just the sheer quantity of that. I mean, we put out that 50 course video and I remember thinking like, this is a monster. It's a behemoth because there was just so much content, it's like six hours of content. Yeah. So 115 plus additional videos that you're adding to that. I mean, that's, there's going to be something in there, I think for everybody. Um, and yeah, that's huge. So yeah, that's really why I wanted you to talk about it. I don't think there's enough training. I don't think there will ever be enough training for agents. And the fact right. that you're not exclusively making it a contracted um, service, you know, where, where people who want to keep their upline can just pay you to access it, I think is fantastic. And that is a steal. That is such a great deal. So yeah, guys, check that out. If you haven't, it is six figure Medicare University, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I it's will post it. Um, it's, it's on, it's on teachable. I will post a link okay. to it um, in, in the comment section on this video once we're done. Sweet. Yes. Check it out, you guys, for sure. Anything else, Christian? I, I think that's great. Um, thank you for all the value, Glenn. And um, do you have anything else before we jump off? No, I think that's it. I think, and uh, you know, guys, any questions about whether you're watching the replay or you're watching this live, feel free to comment below this video. Christian and I are both very active on Facebook. Uh, we will definitely get back to you. Uh, feel free to reach out to us, you know, privately as well. Uh, but yeah, I appreciate your time, Christian. I know you're very busy and I'm glad to see you're back in your office. That's awesome. Yes. Thanks, Glenn. It's, it's, it's like, you know, it's like not seeing your girlfriend for a month or something. You know? <laughs> <laughs> there you have it, you guys. Back to work. That's right. <laughs> Happy selling, everybody. Thanks, guys.